Hello, my name is Jamie Anderson. I'm a family and a psychiatric nurse practitioner. I wanted to post this video because I used to give this presentation in front of high school groups. With the pandemic, it's been a little bit more difficult to get in front of groups. I do normally give this presentation as an interactive speech. So normally I'm used to people raising hands, asking questions. So if this is ever a presentation that you would like a group of yours to see in person or even do through a Zoom meeting, please contact me at uh, intentionalwellnesssolutions.com and I would love to assist with that. By a show of hands, I just want to get to know my audience. How many have an idea of what they want to do with their career right now? How many of you know you're going to go to college? How many people have no clue? How many are just hungry for lunch and want me to like wrap this up quick and get a move on? So what is a nurse practitioner? A nurse practitioner is a registered nurse who's completed advanced education, so a minimum of a master's degree, although there are doctorate programs for this as well. So the training consists of helping you learn how to assess and treat illnesses, so diabetes, high blood pressure, or if a person comes in and they're, they're sick, they have strep throat or something that needs a prescription. So a nurse practitioner can prescribe medications um, a various diagnosis. A nurse practitioner can also be your regular healthcare provider without the supervision of a physician in many states. Um, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head how many states that is, but Minnesota is where I practice and we are an independent state. Nurse practitioners can uh, pre you know, prevent you from getting ill and we also focus on providing education using evidence-based care. So basically it, that means using research to make sure that we're giving you advice that's actually going to help you with this situation that you're dealing with. Oftentimes that can mean fewer prescriptions and less expensive treatments. Perhaps you already know this. However, when I first was starting out in the college world, I had no clue what each degree represented or even meant. So for people who don't know, uh, an associate's degree is typically a two-year program that you do after high school. So that's considered your freshman and sophomore year. A bachelor's degree is a four-year program, and that's still considered an undergrad degree. A master's degree is two additional years beyond your bachelor's degree, and that's considered a graduate level. So if you hear about someone being in grad school, that's what they're talking about. So grad school consider, you know, it takes into consideration master's degree or a doctorate degree. So the doctorate degree is two additional years generally beyond the master's. So um, as we had mentioned before, a master's degree is what a nurse practitioner has to have at a minimum, but there are many other programs um, offered in nursing. And so this slide here doesn't include any trade school or certificate programs which are also great options if you're getting started in the nursing career. Now going way back to look at my story, I was always in special reading classes in elementary school. And a lot of times I would go to this reading class and they would eventually kick me out and say, you're just fine, go back to class. Um, and then that continued on to middle school. I was in special reading courses again because I could never test into regular reading courses and that required me not even to have the ability to take a foreign language, which was frustrating because a lot of my friends were able to take a foreign languages and I had to be in reading again. That continued on to high school and I had to actually um, retake another course for reading once I was in high school, which was so frustrating because I knew how to read, but at the time I, I wasn't able to retain a lot of what I was reading because I just wasn't interested in that. However, now that I realize that, I didn't realize at the time that it wasn't because I wasn't intelligent enough to read, it was just that I didn't have the motivation or the, the interest level to read. So in high school, I ended up taking the ACT score or the test 
and I scored extremely low. I want to say it was in the low teens or something. And when I talked to the guidance counselor about my score on the ACT test, which is a placement test for college, they let me know I wasn't cut out for college. And that kind of just confirmed my beliefs that I already had about myself, that I wasn't going to go for anything important anyways. And I was just happy to even be able to graduate high school. I didn't have any intentions of going to college. And I would specifically say that it's not like I want to be a doctor or anything. I thought college was only for smart people. And at that time, I did not feel very smart. So continuing on with my story, I did end up graduating high school in 2000. I'm the third child of five, and I was the first to graduate. I did end up working in the financial industry for a while after my graduation, and I started my own business after the fact. Six years into the business, I kind of saw that the business was not going to be able to continue successfully. And someone else that I was working with at the time let me know that she was going to college. And it made me think, okay, if she's able to do this, it might be possible that I could. I ended up having a couple kids, and after my second one was born, I, I asked one of the nurses who was caring for me while I was still in the hospital how she ended up getting to be a nurse. And I had never thought I wanted to be a nurse before this moment, and I thought it would just be fun. So I was hoping to be a mom baby nurse, and she told me it was a two-year program. And I thought, you know, I'm going to sign up for that, and I literally did sign up the, within a semester after I had my second child. I applied for Anoka Ramsey Community College and I completed the placement exams, the AccuPlacers, and I tested low in reading again. I did also discuss being a nurse with my immediate family and they thought I was absolutely crazy. I was very scared of needles and any sort of injuries that a person could view. And when they heard that I wanted to be a nurse, they're like, how are you gonna stand shots if you can't even watch it on a TV? I'm the type of person where if I saw shots being given on the news for a flu shot, I had to cover my eyes. And actually one of my first classes that I had to take was a CPR and first aid course. And the book had a lot of images of pretty grotesque uh, pictures of first aid, including a, a, a screwdriver in somebody's eye. And I almost couldn't even finish the class just because I couldn't even open the book. So a friend of mine actually taped pieces over the images so I could flip through the book in the class without being totally disturbed by these trauma images. So I did end up making it through that. Reading tests have been my lifelong nemesis. I so was not wanting to take another college reading course again. I knew I knew how to read. So I slowed way down and I scored significantly higher, like boss, <laughs> and I was no, re no longer required to take the reading course in college. Thank goodness. Uh, it, eventually, in order to get to the nursing program that I was in, they also recommended that I retook my ACT exam, even though I was already in college. It made me more uh, competitive in this program to get in this nursing program. It was based off of a scoring points of how high your ACT exam was. And I scored significantly higher. And for the record, I scored a 30 in the reading portion because I slowed way down. High five. Or like fist bump it up. Takeaway tip number one from this overall presentation. I do not want people to confuse a lack of interest or motivation with a lack of ability, intelligence, or knowledge. In order to succeed, we first have to believe that we can. I know firsthand for myself, when I was in school, when I was being told by teachers that I wasn't testing into where I should be or being thrown into different reading classes because I, I didn't test very high. I honestly believed that I was stupid or 
not intelligent or not capable of accomplishing anything. And that prevented me from trying so many things because I was afraid. So if that has ever been a situation with you, you can really ask yourself, you know, I might not be interested in this. I might not be passionate about that, but that doesn't mean that you don't have the ability or the intelligence to accomplish anything that you are actually wanting to succeed at. I like to include this slide because it's in my actual high school transcripts. Um, if I would have based my likelihood of success off of my high school transcripts, the RN program that I was trying to get into required a minimum GPA of 2.75. A lot of places are even higher than that. So if I would have looked at my high school transcripts, I would not have even attempted an RN program or a program that required a minimum of 2.75. I wanted to include this information as well because this is my actual transcript from my VSN program, which was 3.91. I was so frustrated because this college had grade shading, so I received an A minus. So instead of getting a 4.0, I ended up getting a 3.91, but still pretty good in my opinion. So what steps does it take to become a nurse practitioner? So first, you need to create, finish the prerequisite courses for a nursing program. A lot of the times, that's what they would call your generals and prerequisites for some of the science and math courses you might have to take in the two-year RN program. I did also have to get my two um, or three-month certification to become a nursing assistant. So in that course, they teach you how to help care for patients doing their daily living activities. So helping them bathe, helping to um, make a bed change if they're still in the bed. Um, There's several different skills that are absolutely helpful to becoming a nurse that are taught in that two to three month course. The next step was the two year RN program. You can do a two year or you could do a four year program to be a registered nurse. Next, I decided to go on to be a family nurse practitioner. So that was an additional uh, two years beyond the bachelor program. And I actually ended up going back for my psychiatric nurse practitioner. So it was a post master's program to work specifically in mental health, which I found was my passion. So after each program, there's typically a national certification exam that you have to take in order to be able to work in the field. And it basically just tests you to make sure that you have the basic standards to practice safely in order to care for patients. There are other specialties at the master's level for nurse practitioner or for nurses in general. It doesn't have to be a nurse practitioner. They also have educational programs, leadership, and informatics, which helps um, you can work in IT as a nurse. I also want to make one reference here that's not on this screen. There is a nursing program called uh, LPN or a licensed practical nurse. That is an 18 month program and it is a great start. It is a great opportunity for people to either work their whole career as or use as a stepping stone to see if they want to go further in nursing. They are absolutely invaluable. I've worked with so many LPNs. I didn't actually become one first just because I didn't really understand the, the steps to nursing. I mean, there's so many different programs, but I have worked with so many LPNs um, that are absolutely fabulous. And I would have been completely lost even as a nurse practitioner without working with them. So definitely consider that as a career. I definitely had a lot of ups and downs throughout my academic career. Some of the successes I had was I was accepted to the nursing program on my first application, which was huge because only 30 people were accepted. And I want to say that over 200 applied. So I thought that was absolutely crazy. And I was so honored that I was accepted on my first try. Um, I also passed each national certification on my first try. So my reg the NCLEX for my RM program and 
the family nurse practitioner exam and my psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner exam. It required so much studying that I was so worried about failing since I did have a history of failing lots of reading tests, as I've mentioned before. Um, I've also worked in so many different, set, different healthcare settings with different patients, and I've been able to have the opportunity to learn what I absolutely love and what I absolutely do not want to do. And I never quit. Some of the failures were, again, I bombed some tests that I literally spent hundreds of hours reading so many pages of nursing material. And so many of my peers did the same. And it was absolutely heartbreaking when you're taking some of these tests. So I, I love to work with students that are in nursing programs and everything because you are investing so much time and energy and you're taking such a huge risk. And it can be emotionally heartbreaking when you're not scoring as high as what you'd like or what you feel like you should because you're spending so much time doing this. Um, again, kind of going along with being grateful that I've worked in a variety of settings and work with types of patients. There are some settings that I absolutely did not like and did not enjoy. I remember one position I had that I learned pretty quick that it wasn't a good fit for me. And I used to spend <laughs> the first five minutes in the parking lot crying and pumping myself up to go in and finish my shift. Um, and I learned about after two years that it just was not a good fit for me. And I thought about quitting a lot throughout my whole journey. When I got into the nursing program in the first place, I wanted to be a mom baby nurse. And we did a rotation at the hospital where I was working with the moms and babies. And I was expecting it to be this super exciting time where moms were happy and dads were happy. And we're playing with babies and they're so fun and cute. But some of the patients that I got were actually very sad stories. They were stories of people who didn't necessarily want babies or people who um, had used substances while they were pregnant and, and the babies were withdrawing from different things. And, and it was just so hard to see. And it was too heartbreaking for me. And I almost thought about quitting my nursing program at that time and not even becoming a nurse because I didn't know if I should even continue if I wasn't going to actually work in the field or the specialty that I started the nursing program for. I'm so glad that I did not because I did find what my other passion was eventually. Takeaway tip number two, beware of the imposter phenomenon. When I started my RN program, there were so many different medical terms that were being used that I literally felt like I was in a class where they were speaking a different language. And I obviously barely understood the English language. If you look at my whole um, pre-college career. And, and so when I even started practicing as a nurse, I questioned myself all the time. And I wondered, am I even qualified to do this job? Am I, you know, someone's going to find out that I should not be practicing. It's not safe for me. I, someone's gonna come in and take my license away. And I worried so much that I wasn't good enough to do what I was trained and studied so hard to do. And I have found that a lot of people, especially in the healthcare field, and, and I'm sure many other fields, that we, we all feel that way at certain times. So that is normal. That is, um, I think sometimes too, it can represent that a person is very cautious and wants to do extremely well at whatever they're doing. They take their job very seriously. And I have found that with some of the other nurses that I've worked with, it actually made them better nurses in the long run because they were more cautious and they did look things up and they did, they went above and beyond. So if you're feeling like you're an imposter, know that you are likely perfectly qualified for the job. And at some point in time, somebody would have caught on to you if you weren't qualified. Um, of course, every once in a while, someone could slip through the cracks, but most likely you're exactly where you're supposed to be. But what does a typical work day look like in the clinic as a family nurse practitioner? I previously worked at uh, an employee health clinic and my day generally started at 8 a.m. and it ended at 5 p.m. That include an hour lunch. I always made sure to leave the building because a lot of people would come in during lunchtime and want to be seen. And, and it was so hard for me to say no, 
because I wanted to be able to help everyone. But when I took that hour lunch break, it helped me to be able to focus and give my undivided attention to my patients for the afternoon shift. So that also required me to see patients every 30 minutes. And we write these long old thing called soap notes. <laughs> and it, it's, it's like writing a paper. So it does require a lot of um, time. And sometimes you can fall behind on that. I also would give different things called lunch and learn presentations. So if there were topics that people wanted me to discuss, whether it was stress management or how to help a person's overall health, talk about weight loss, exercise, improving a person's blood pressure, diabetes, I would include that in these presentations. Continuing education. If you are the type of person who just wants to go to school and never go to school again, picking something in the healthcare career the healthcare field isn't necessarily going to be the greatest idea. I would say that most days, if not every day, I am looking up information. I'm continuing my education daily based off of patients that I see, based off of what a person would come in with, what symptoms they would have, to make sure that I was always prescribing the best thing or um, utilizing that evidence-based information in order to order the right labs to make sure that I was picking the right diagnosis. So continuing your education daily and reading new studies is always going to be involved working as a nurse, nurse practitioner. I did also host small group classes where mostly weight loss classes. And on the side, I was doing some hospice visits. Some of the other people that I did interact with when I was at the clinic um, were not only their patients, but their families. I had a medical assistant that uh, worked at the same clinic as I, and she was absolutely amazing and kept me on task and you know, had everything prepared to help me be more successful with my day. We were a team. Um, I often worked with another registered nurse who was doing health coaching, and I would reach out to various providers as needed for reviewing cases, discussing best treatment plans. I also was working with the HR department for various things. And um, sometimes IT professionals, because I, I often don't know what I'm doing with the computer, <laughs> or I forget a password and I get locked out too many times. So thank you so much IT professionals for being there for me when I do something crazy to my computer. And then I also worked with a lot of laboratory employees and dietitians, depending on what types of patients I was seeing and some of the treatment plans that we were ordering. So after working in the clinic for so long, I found that I loved working with patients when they were coming in and telling me about the different stressors and life events going on that were causing them to have difficulties in their relationships, difficulties with sleep or their energy levels. And People were coming in for mental health concerns. So I went back to school, got my psychiatric nurse practitioner certification, took the exam, passed, and I started my own practice. Um, this allows me to spend time with the patients that, um, to actually spend the amount of time that's needed. People need time to actually talk with you, to build trust, and, and talking about their stressors and problems and can be so scary for so many people. So I felt like by creating my own private practice, I could create the environment that I felt best met that need. Um, in the process, I always say, if you hang out with me long enough, I will convince you you're capable of doing anything. And it's basically because I've seen myself that I went from thinking that I wasn't capable of doing anything to accomplishing so many goals that I never would have dreamed of at a younger age. I love percepting students in trainings for like RN programs or a nurse practitioner program. And so having my own practice allows me to be able to do that and offer that. And then I also collaborate still with other professionals who are building their business and share information to help them grow their practice and offer various services to patients that, um, that either I see or um, the types of patients that they see. So it's it's really nice to be able to network with other people who have similar values and goals and, and being able to work together 
and send each other patients because you know who you're sending them to, you know that they're going to treat them right, and the patient ultimately gets helped the best. The great things about my career, number one, I get to help people. I love helping people. It helps me have a sense of satisfaction that I'm doing something that's meaningful and that I enjoy doing. I also get to work with people and family during tough times. So many times in this world, society wants us to kind of hide some of the things that we're going through with stressors. And I love being that person that people can turn to and talk to and feel safe and know that I'm going to be real with them. I'm not going to cut them down. I'm not going to, I'm going to meet them where they're at and we're going to get through it together. Nursing is a trusted occupation in the public opinion. I believe uh, we're the number one trusted occupation for several years in a row. I'll have to look up what that, that, uh, the, the place that does the testing and certifies that. But I don't take that very lightly. I know people are talking to me about very sensitive things that have gone on in their life. And sometimes they're things that they've never even talked with anyone else about. And I just feel so honored that people are willing to discuss that with me when they haven't discussed it with anyone else before. It's, it's I don't know, I, that, that feeling never gets old. Um, I'm always learning something new, always. <laughs> in the beginning, I used to feel that if I didn't know everything, that that, again, made me stupid. And I've learned that there's no way that we can specialize in absolutely everything. And I'm willing to learn something new. I know how to research different topics. I know how to, you know, find the guidelines for various things. So instead of being afraid to learn new information or to tell someone, you know what, I'm not the expert in that, but I'm either going to refer you to someone who is, or I'm going to come up with some information and help you out through that. So. It keeps me uh, passionate about what I do because I know ultimately that information is going to be used with my patient and help their specific scenario or at least show them that I'm trying. Uh, nurse practitioners are in high, high demand. Re recruiters contact me daily and a lot of times offer me positions that I know I wouldn't like <laughs> or um, or basically it's probably positions that maybe don't allow me to spend as much time with patients as what I would like in private practice. So I do feel I have job security though. So it's, it's a really good career to get into. If you don't like what you um, are hired to do, there are so many different specialties and opportunities as a nurse at any level. Um, it's, it's, sometimes just overwhelming how many opportunities you have. And I'm such a curious creature that I wanted to bounce around to different places and figure out what am I passionate about? What do I love? Because we spend so much time at work that you really should at least somewhat enjoy what you do um, because it can play, uh, play a role in how much energy you have in the times that you're not working. Uh, nursing also pays a reasonable salary. So I'm a single mom, I have three kiddos, and I'm able to comfortably uh, provide for my kids with the annual salaries that um, this, this career provides. Takeaway tip number three. This is so important, and I want you to remember this and think about this. If you're feeling like an imposter, you don't feel like you're smart. You, it is so important to know that nobody is going to know or nobody cares about how much you know until they know how much you care. I honestly believe the reason why I have patients continually coming back and following up when they're going through anything they're going through, whether it's just a physical health condition or their mental health condition, they know that I care and I genuinely do. And I have worked with so many people that I would easily say are, are much more brilliant, much more book smart, and way more qualified to do advanced things beyond what I do. And I've seen patients turn them away and I've, it, it blows my mind. But if a person doesn't feel like they care about you, it doesn't matter how much you know. So people want to be able to work with someone that not only is very knowledgeable and experienced, they want to know that you care. Um, so bedside manners really matter. And um, 
no matter how smart you are, if a person doesn't feel like you care about them, they're not going to trust you and they're not even going to take your expert recommendation. There were definitely downside moments of my career. Working as a nurse can have you working a lot of evenings, nights, weekends, or holidays, which were sometimes um, disappointing and sad when I wasn't able to spend time with family during those important moments. Some careers in the healthcare field require you to be on call. So even when you have time off, you might still be interrupted and expected to come into work. Several times, the, the times that where um, I should have been able to rest or take a break didn't happen because a lot of times the medical facilities that I was working at were understaffed or they were very busy. And as I had mentioned before, when you're not taking your breaks, you, you are not able to focus. You're not 100% present. I wasn't able to care for myself in a way that I needed to in order to be available for my patients. I often worried a lot that just one mistake could be deadly to my patients. If I typed in the wrong dose for a medication, if I typed in the wrong letter and misspelled a medication, that could be potentially deadly and fatal. So I was always very cautious and <laughs> was double checking, triple checking. Um, but that, that fear can be a little overwhelming because you know that one mistake is literally fatal. It could be anyways. Uh, thankfully, that hasn't been the case. It can be super stressful. So again, self-care is so important. It's easy to listen to management or other people say, well, we don't have time for breaks. We don't have, we need to provide better customer service. We, need, we provide better customer service when we're taking care of ourselves. And I am a strong advocate of that. So if you are ever working in a place that is telling you to work through your breaks regularly, that's a, a formula for burnout. You won't last, you won't be, passionate about what you do. Um, Self-care is so important. So the impact of the career when I was working at places that weren't a good fit for my passions and my schedule, it did take a toll on my personal life and my family life. So that was, that was difficult during lots of times. Well, the other part, student loans are uh, not fun. And I'll probably be paying on those for, for a very long time, but um, Honestly, I feel so grateful that I took on that risk. I feel like it was an investment in myself in order to be able to help patients and patients to go on to help the world. And so I, I'm so grateful, even though um, student loans are, are not the most exciting topic for me to talk about, it is something that I feel like was a great investment. And if I had to, I would do it all over again. So how can high school students prepare to be a nurse? You can ask yourself, what types of things do I even enjoy doing? Um, of course, you're not gonna know all the different types of nurses out there, but you can always interview different nurses and, and Google what types of careers nurses can have. And that's gonna give you an idea if that's something that you might want to do. I highly, highly encourage if your high school allows you to do something called PSEO, or take college courses in place of your high school courses, you might even be able to have your generals completed before you start a registered nursing program. It allows you to be able to take college courses without having to pay for them out of pocket. And you, they also cover your textbooks. So if it's available at your school, look into it, ask about it. Apply for scholarships. There are so many grants and scholarships that are available that I wish I maybe would have even looked into and I probably would have done a little bit better on the whole not having student loans. Um, but look into different programs, meet with a college advisor, meet with somebody who is actually working in the job that you think you might like. Sometimes people are able to shadow in a clinic. So I've had uh, you know, high school students come in and actually sit with me for a day and see how my day looks with the permission of my patients, obviously. Not everyone allows someone to sit in, but it, it can give you an opportunity to see if that is something that you would like to move forward with. I highly recommend going on discussion groups or like on social media or Facebook and kind of just get a, a glimpse of what people are talking about. Is it, are they making complaints about things about the field or are they talking about things that are super exciting to you? But find a mentor who's willing to encourage you no matter what 
my immediate family, when I first told them that I wanted to be a registered nurse, kind of told me that I would not be a good nurse. <laughs> they, they told me that I wasn't going to make it. They told me that I was crazy. And I'm so grateful that I didn't listen to that. And I had an inner voice telling me, too bad, so sad, I'm going for it anyways. Someone is going to have to kick me out before I stop. I'm going to do this. It's going to be so much more effective for you if you find a mentor, whether that's a friend, that's someone at church, someone at school, find someone who's going to encourage you no matter what. So even when you get to the point where you fail a test, hopefully you never do, but that you're going to have someone that's going to lift you up and say, no, you got this. You keep going. I'm here for you. That's going to help keep you motivated along the way. So. I also recommend just taking action and just try. What's the worst thing that could happen? And we we often look at the the likelihood of if we fail, but what if we looked at what will happen if I succeed? So it's your choice to decide which one you're going to act on, fear or possibilities. And even if your friends or family doubt you, do your best not to doubt yourself. It's going to happen. However, I will say this, my dad literally told me that I would be a lousy nurse and he is my biggest fan. And anytime I tell him I'm going to do anything with my career or when I went back to school for my psychiatric nurse practitioner program, or started my private practice, he was 100% on board and was super supportive and helped me with babysitting. And he's like, you got this, you can do anything. You so it was so nice to see that transformation that even though he thought I wasn't capable of doing it, now he is my biggest fan and I don't hold that against him. He just didn't think it was likely that I would do it. So remember that early on, even when people doubt you, they might come around. So don't be upset about it. They just don't have your, your vision that you have. And please never, ever, ever give up. You got this. If this is if this is what you want to do, you're going to do it. And if it's not this, it will lead you into something else. So I believe in you. If you don't believe in yourself, contact me and I, I'll give you a pep talk. So my final thoughts for you is just do the first step. I am so grateful to share this information with you today. Back in the Stone Age, <laughs> when I was in high school, we had career days as well. And I remember barely paying attention because I believe that none of the great careers that were out there that actually required an education were going to be something that I would ever be able to accomplish because I was told I wasn't cut out for college. But apparently I was though. And you have made a, may have had someone in your life tell you that you were not, um, you're not able to do something great with your life or worse, maybe you even tell yourself that. But I want to tell you today that <laughs> my hope is that after leaving here today, that all you walk away knowing that you're capable of more than you even realize. And if you need someone to drive that message home to you, I am not kidding. You contact me and I will definitely be there to motivate you and inspire you and talk you through any, any of the doubts that you have for yourself or what anyone else is telling you because you are capable of doing anything. You just have to be willing to take the first step and stay dedicated. Again, apologize for getting choked up, but if you have any questions, any thoughts, any concerns, send me a message on my site. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see what you thought about this presentation and let me know your future goals. Um, my webpage is at intentionalwellnesssolutions.com and just click send me a message. I hope you have an awesome day and accomplish everything that you set out to do. Take care. Bye.